guys and welcome back to my channel so today I'm doing a makeup tutorial and I'm not in my usual filming setup I kind of just felt like filming in the lounge somewhere super chilled it'll just be like a chatty makeup tutorial I'll probably end up talking majority about the products but a lot of you guys have been complimenting my skin um, so I'm just gonna go through all of the base and I'm gonna do a little fun eye makeup look as well but just for you guys that have been commenting on my recent instagram photos and stories asking what base products i use i thought i would run through absolutely everything um and because i'm like literally obsessed with animal print i found this really cute eye look but it was like leopard print inspired like it was just really cool. So I think I'm going to try and recreate that as best as I can. Probably not as good as her because the photo was like pretty detailed and intense. But I want to do something similar. So like gold on the lid and then I'm going to try and do those leopard print patterns like on my mobile lid. And then just something like smoky and yeah. But I wanted to mainly do this video for my base because I've gotten heaps of questions about it. So let's hop straight in this is going to be so weird because i have like a little table here all right i'm gonna zoom you guys up so you can see very oh that's that's very zoomed okay let's put my hair behind my ears um i think i'm gonna start with eye makeup just because just in case I get fallout. Um, I usually would do this if I'm going for something dramatic on my eyes. If not, I would do base first, but because I'm gonna do something a bit more technical on the eyes, I will do eyes first. So I'm gonna go in with a brow pencil. I've been using brow pencils like the past like six months now to do my brows, but I haven't really been needing to touch them since I got a recent um, eyebrow touch up so like i don't even know why i'm doing this but there's just like a few faded strokes that i'm just really slightly filling in like i literally don't even have to do anything um it's just here and there and that's actually all i do to my brows and then i just take some brow soap I know it's really weird, but it's actually really good for brushing up your brows. And I just use this like bamboo toothbrush. I know, really, really weird, but it works. Um, I'm just gonna spray a bit of Fix Plus on it and literally just take it and brush up my brows. And it just gives like a fuller look. I'm not sure how well you can see it on the camera, but because like my brows are microbladed you can't really tell but it just makes them look a lot fluffier and fuller so i don't really have that much actual hair there it's all like stroke mimics like from the feather touch um tattoo but it looks like hair it's crazy so i've been grabbing this bad boy every time i've been doing my makeup i'm not usually like a pot concealer type of gal like i love just my normal like wand concealers, but this one's really good. It's in the shade Custard Medium 1. It's the NARS Soft Matte Concealer. And it comes in a pot and I use it to um, carve my brows. And I also use it for concealer too, which is like weird. Um, but I don't really conceal underneath my eyes as much. As in like I don't use as much product as I would normally. Um, just I find like less is more when it comes to under eye stuff. I don't like my under eyes looking cakey. So when I put less product on there, it just looks way more natural. So weird me saying that, but I'm like, I'm loving the natural soft vibes recently rather than really heavy eye makeup and base. But I still want my face to look flawless, but I want to make it look flawless without it looking cakey. That's like my goal. Just gonna grab a bit more concealer on a brush and I'm just gonna really lightly go over my eyelids just because like I have really veiny eyelids it's so weird so I just really lightly pop the concealer on all over I 
and then to set because you have to set any cream product if you're going to go over it with a powder with a powder otherwise it'll just be so hard to blend out so I always always set my eyelids with either the Rimmel translucent press powder or the Laura Mercier which is what I'm wearing I uh, using today um, on my lids it just makes sure that when you put the eyeshadow on it blends flawlessly like you won't get any like muddy patches or yeah it'll just seriously change your life so there's my brows and base done literally takes me like two seconds to do that um so i recently just got a new nars eye palette i haven't used it before so i thought i'd give it a go and the colors are up my alley so it's in the shade like the whole palette ignited this is the nars palette it's so pretty i don't actually i don't really use nars eyeshadow palettes but look at the colors oh so there's like metallics and then there's like the um the mattes which is what i'm mainly going to use today and i'm going to use a gold pigment for my lid and then i'm going to go over the lid with like a felt tip liner to create the leopard pattern not sure how that's going to turn out because i'm to be honest, I'm not very arty. Like I love makeup and I, I love to get creative with makeup. But funnily enough, in school, art was one of my worst subjects. Like I, when it comes to drawing like stuff, patterns, figures, things, so bad, like really bad. Okay, so I'm gonna grab this shade first. It's just a really light brown. Um, okay, Numea is the color might just use this little mirror and i'm just going to use that as a transition color first and then i'm going to build my way up and use the other shades but this one's just going to be a transition i also just got my eyelashes done so i feel fabulous I feel so naked without eyelash extensions now i'm sure you guys that get eyelash extensions can relate because yeah i literally cannot picture myself without them now it's really bad it's a bad addiction okay then i'm gonna go in with so try not to blind you this middle shade which is called sophia this one's gonna be really nice so i'm basically just gonna put this like all over my lid because it'll just be like my base color i want the crease to be very warm because my whole lid is gonna be gold so i want to create the depth in my crease try not to take a dark or darker color above the crease because that's what's going to kind of make it look a bit pandery like you don't want that you want to definitely keep your dark colors on the lid and in the crease and then with ever whatever's left over on your brush or even grab a new brush if you feel like it's not blended out use a new brush and then use that to blend up to your brow bone because it'll just create like a seamless gradient and that'll create like the smoky effect the tip is just to keep blending seriously that is how you get a seamless edge on an eyeshadow look um literally if you just spend like two seconds blending your eyeshadow will not look blended like end of story unless you've created a miracle product that you can just stamp on your eyes all right so i'm just slowly building up the color just using the same brown this is actually very buildable like it in the pan it doesn't look as dark as it's coming up on my lid which is a good thing because i want my lid to be um dark and i want my um crease to be quite dark and defined because i'm going to do a little cut crease so the darker your crease is when you're doing a cut crease, the more defined that crease will look. <laughs> that didn't make sense. Probs not. Okay. Let's keep building up the color. Then I'm going to grab this color. It's more of a coppery burnt orange, literally like my favorite color to wear on my eyes. And I find that this sort of color complements light eyes and dark eyes. So I pretty much use this sort of color like on every client when they want like a smoky brown look. So I'm just taking that as well. I think I might even grab an even darker brown from a different palette. Oh yeah, I've got that one there. Um, to create an even darker crease. 
just because I want that cut crease to be really defined. So I'm just going to go in with like a mixture of those two colors um, and just really sort of build it up so it's nice and pigmented and just really blending it out to the side of my eye. Can't believe I'm doing a leopard eye look. Like that is just taking leopard print to a whole new extreme, seriously. But I feel like leopard print, like I know people go through phases and stuff like that and things go in like in and out of fashion, but I feel like, like I've always had a thing for prints. Like I haven't been as obsessed with leopard print as I am now, but I don't think I would get sick of it anytime soon, you know? All right, so just making sure it's all nice and blended. So I recently just got the Urban Decay Game of Thrones collection and it's so awesome. Even though I don't watch Game of Thrones, like it is so cool. And then it comes out like this. Like how cool is that? There's a dark brown in this palette. Oh, actually it's not quite dark brown, but I'm going to use it anyways. It's like that color. So I'm just gonna use that um, in my crease again. I probably should have used a headband at all. Ooh, this one's nice. It's more ready actually. It's like a dark ready brown. But I'm gonna use that in the crease. Ooh, that's actually really nice. Not the color that I thought it was. I'm just gonna use that in my crease. Whoa, this eyeshadow is really pigmented. Okay, I think that is how dark I want the brown. I don't want it too dark, because I still want it to look semi-soft, but still bold, you know what I mean? Okay, so I'm just gonna use this Cover FX Concealer. It's in the shade Medium 1, and I'm gonna use that as my cut crease, I think. It doesn't have to be like white, it's just like a, I like it because it's thick, so it's easy to control, it's not too watery. Um, and I'm just going to use this Rebon Multi Shader 53 Concealer Brush. And this is what I'm going to use to cut the crease. Alright. Do you guys want to zoom up on this? Alright, that's a bit better. So, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to do like a half cut crease. And then I'm going to darken this up with a black gold pigment on the lid. And then I'm going to do like a faded leopard design. Let's see if it's actually going to look like that. If you're wanting to do a cut crease and you have no bloody idea, make sure you look straight into a mirror first and actually find where your crease is. It's going to be a little bit harder if you have hooded eyelids. I would say I have like, I wouldn't say I have like, Okay, I do have a lot of space on my lid, but it's I don't really have a defined crease. Like I've got a skin fold, which is like basically like where my crease is. So you just want to find your crease and just go a little bit above. If you go too much above your natural crease, it'll it'll look cool when your eyes are shut, but then when it's open, it looks a bit draggy to me. So you just want to kind of emphasize your crease by the littlest bit. Um it is quite tricky on someone with very little lid space, but you can still do it. It's still doable. Um, okay, so just looking forward, there's my crease. So that there's basically where I will be cutting from. So you can still kind of see the concealer when my eyes are open. I probably will go a little bit above that so you can see it a little bit more clear. But because my eyelashes are so full, you can't really tell. Um, but let's... I feel like I can't breathe when I do stuff like this. Whew, okay. <laughs> trying not to get it on my eyelash extension because there's seriously nothing worse than trying to get concealer out of it. Just taking a flat brush and blending that in. Like to be honest, you know, a look like this, a half cut crease does take a while to kind of master and get used to like when I first try to cut crease, it oh, it was so horrible. So, you know, these sort of looks that are a bit more difficult, 
like you will have to practice a few times before you get it right you just got to kind of like you know find what works for you like this way that I'm doing it might not work for you but I like to kind of keep my eye o like half open so I can see what it's gonna look like but I'm just going with like a smaller brush and going a little bit above my natural crease like I'm probably making this look really easy but it like it isn't like it, it's not an easy look to do especially if you're just beginning um, but trust me after you practice a few times it gets easier all right I'm just kind of like patting the concealer in so it like kind of blends because I don't want it to go all the way across I just want it to be um, mostly pigmented in the first half of my eye so it'll look like that let's do the other eye oh, I feel like I did this so good now I'm just gonna stuff this one up if you guys recreate this look tag me in it or even if you just you know skip the leopard part of it I want to know if like how I'm explaining it actually helps because like the whole point in this, of this video is to teach you guys how to do this obviously and it makes me so happy when I see that you guys have actually used my tutorials to create looks that you wouldn't normally do on your own okay add a bit more concealer and then I'm just gonna grab this brush again you got to be kind of patient with this you can't rush it or it'll look shit um, I've tried to do a cut crease in a rush and it didn't end well sometimes I even use my finger I'm going to use a gold exactly where I've put the concealer. So I'm going to take this one, which has been a favorite of mine for a while. I think it's from Colourpop. Yes, Colourpop Kathleen Light. It's in the shade called Lion. <laughs> How relevant, but it's really, really pretty. I might actually put a little bit of this Glitter Fix Gel over the top. First, it's from Jolie Beauty. I don't even know how I got this, to be honest. So I'm just going to like really lightly pat that on the lid first, just to make sure the pigment sticks properly. And then this is the pigment from Colourpop. <gasps> I don't know how well you can see that, but in real life, holy bloody shit. Oh, that's amazing. Just really press it on. And obviously, you could use any pigment. If you have like a metallic eyeshadow even, I reckon you should like crumble it up because I feel like it just looks so much better when it's in a loose form. So you can really pack, pack it on. Okay, and I'm just fading that out like that. Um, I'm going to use a brush to blend that out because I'm going to make the um, outer corners a bit darker so I'll just leave that for now and then I'm going to get a brush and take away the fallout that has happened um, on top of my eyelashes because it's so annoying when that happens so I'm going to take the Game of Thrones palette again and take this black it's got a bit of glitter in it but I don't really mind that it looks really cute <gasps> I almost dented it okay I'm gonna close my eyes and just start patting that into my outer corner first just because I don't know how pigmented this is and I'm just gonna slowly build up the color and blend it into the outer corner and then like kind of blend it into the pigment so it doesn't look as harsh don't blend this black above your crease or you look like a panda Seriously, black is such 
like it's such a hard color to use in my opinion because it's so easy to just stuff up a makeup look if you put too much black that's why i definitely prefer using darker browns because it can look a lot softer and you're less likely to stuff up a makeup look just patting it and then starting to blend it in with the gold and the brown keep it under the crease very important so i'm just going to do like the basic leopard print pattern which i have on my top so some circles small circles let's see how this goes i might do a little zoom up in case i like really fail badly and you can really see me fail hopefully i don't though ready <laughs> I feel like this is going to take me a long time. I want to call Jesse, my nail tech, to come help. Jesse. Oh my god, this is so much harder than it looks. And coming from someone that is shit at art, help. Leopard print, you know, doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, I don't know how the faded thing is gonna look, but I think that's the best I can do, to be honest. I don't hate it. I didn't think it would look like that and be so hard, <laughs> but I'm gonna try to do the other eye. Okay, so I'm gonna jazz it up a bit and I'm gonna put some of this Stila Magnificent Metal in the middle of some of the leopard prints. can't even really notice the leopard when you are far away. Kind of looks cool. Okay, so now onto base. Let me just zoom you guys up a tad. Okay, that's good. So I've been loving using the Laura Mercier Radiance Primer with the Benefit Professional as my base. Obviously, this one is what's going to give your base that glow. It is really, really hydrating as well. So I put that all over pretty much on my forehead, everywhere. And then I go in with Benefits Professional just in my T-zone and on my chin because that's where I find that I have um, open pores and it just fills them in and makes my skin texture really smooth all over. Um, and I look a little bit underneath my eyes too. And then the foundation that I've been obsessed with is also by Laura Mercier. It is their Foundation Flawless Lumiere Radiance Perfecting Foundation. I'm in the shade 3 and one Buff, but I also like to mix it with a little bit of the Benefit Hello Happy. I love this on its own as well. It's not as full coverage as this one, but this is what's going to give it the really luminous um, look. So I'm going to go in with a Morphe G36 first. I just put about four pumps of that on and then I shake my Benefit up and I put a little bit of that too. The Benefit has a more of a golden undertone, which is good if you've got a fake tan on like I have. Um, but yeah, it's just... It's like the perfect sort of combo for my skin because I do have quite an olive undertone because I'm half South African, half Croatian. So yeah, my undertone is very olive. So I just like to buff that in first with a brush and really press it into my skin. I'm not like swiping. 
I'm really pressing it into the skin so it actually seeps into the skin. Um, I found that, like, I always just used to, when I used to use a brush, I used to be like, like, that is not going to make the foundation go into your skin. Um, you need to really press it in. That's what it's going to make it look natural as well. <laughs> Did I just stuff up that? Yep, half of it, like, pretty much came off. So really patting that on, just kind of like it's a beauty blender, but it's a brush. But I also go over the top of my foundation with a beauty blender as well. Um, the finish of this foundation, as I said before, is very glowy, but it is also pretty good coverage and it is buildable. So if you don't like um, the first layer, if you don't think that's enough coverage, you can definitely go over it with a second layer without it looking cakey. Um, but I just usually go all over with like four or five pumps. Um, and then I go over it with a damp beauty blender and this is just what like completes the base. So making sure you go all the way down your neck because there's nothing worse than a foundation line. And then as I said before, the concealer I've been obsessed with is this NARS one. So it's just the pot version of the, oh, what's it called? the radiance concealer but i just like the pot version i don't know why it's a lot thicker in consistency but i feel like you don't really need much like i only really use like that much underneath my eyes um and then all the way into the inner tear ducts because i find that that's probably the darkest um area of my face um that i wanted to conceal so just really blending that down and then just on the sides of my nose as well. Um, and then just with whatever's remaining on the brush, I'm just going to go in and create that shadow line that I was speaking about earlier. Just like that and just blend it out. Um, and then I'm just going to put a little bit on my forehead, on my chin and then above my lip. A technique that I've been loving is actually using my finger to blend the concealer in. Because of the warmth of your finger, it really like allows the product to really get into your skin rather than sitting on top of the skin. Um, I used to always pack concealer on and then just like basically lightly blending it in and not actually realizing it wasn't going into my skin. So I find that when I use my finger and really like use the warmth from my finger, it like, it just melts into the skin and it doesn't look cakey at all. It does take a little bit longer than I usually would when I use my beauty blender, but it honestly is worth it if you want your makeup to last throughout the day and just look nice and hydrated underneath your eyes because there's honestly nothing worse then it dry under eyes like it just does not look nice and especially if you already have dry skin as it is you don't want to be stacking concealer underneath your eyes and then setting it and baking it with a powder honestly like i said before less is more when it comes to under eye areas and i've learned over the years of being a makeup artist trust me then i'm just going to take my um, damp beauty blender again and just go over the top of that just to make sure everything is absolutely blended. But I did the majority blending with my finger. All right. And then I'm just gonna blend my chin here, here. Then I'm going to grab a translucent powder. This one's a Laura Mercier one. I also do love the Hourglass Veal, um, what's it called? Veal translucent powder, I think. But um, I've stopped baking underneath my eyes for the reason that I stated before. And I just really lightly pat this on. It's kind of like baking, but with a brush. I just find it less harsh and I find that sometimes when I crease, like when I've baked, it looks horrible. So this is just a softer way of setting underneath the eyes. I'm just going to take a bigger brush and just wipe off any excess powder that may be under. Alright, 
So because my skin is, I would say, more combo now, it used to be very oily, but I guess as you age, your skin ages too. And I found that I'm getting more drier as I'm getting older, which I think is normal. I wouldn't say I have dry skin. I definitely have, if I had to choose, I would have more oily skin, but at the moment right now, um, it's more combo. So I still like to set my face. If you have dry skin, I would recommend skipping this step um, just because you're just going to emphasize it even more. But I found that even using this, the Nude by Nature powder, I've used this, I used to use this in high school. And then I bought it like a couple months ago and um, I just wanted to give it a go again. And because it's all natural, um, I still do like the Australis one, but I find that this one has less coverage and I'm finding I like the, the look of like a less cakier face recently. Like I would have to say the Australis is great if you want really full coverage because basically it's not a pressed powder, it's like a pressed foundation powder. Like you can use the Australis powder on its own. So sometimes I would just use that if I wanted something real quick um, all over my face just to leave the house. But I'm finding I'm really reaching towards this Nude by Nature one. This one's in the shade um, Medium. So it's a good um, color for my tan that I have at the moment. And you don't really need much, but it just makes your skin look really flawless. Um, and it doesn't make it look really matte like i find that the australis one like if you want a matte face then that is the product for you um but this one is kind of like semi-matte like you can still see the glow underneath my skin after i've just set my whole face with the powder so if you do have dry skin and you don't like using a pressed powder over your foundation then i would just recommend taking a translucent powder and just placing them in the spots where you're going to bronze contour and highlight so Obviously, it's just going to be a little bit harder to blend a bronzer, like a powdered bronzer, over your um, wet foundation. So, I always just like to set it. Like, my face still is a little bit dewy. It's not completely um, dry, which is why I, like, I'm liking now. I'm liking the more dewy look. Um, but I recently got a, I think this is a foundation. Yes, Skin Foundation Stick by Bobbi Brown. And I really wanted to get this dark shade to cream contour. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you'll know that I am probably the worst makeup artist at doing cream contour. But since finding this and trying it a few times, it's actually not too bad. Obviously, start with less because if you just go full out, it's just going to take so long to blend and that's when it's going to look very unnatural. Um, I'm a more of a, I would rather a natural looking bronzer and contour as opposed to a really sharp line. That's just me though. Um, but I know a lot of people do like heavy bronzer. I just don't think it suits me, but like, I still like the bronzy look, but I'd rather like bronzy all over my face rather than just like sharp contour. You'll know what I mean in a sec. So I'm going to get this. This is in the shade neutral almond. And what I've been doing recently is just that, that, and I like to blend those out first before I go to my forehead, just because it does dry pretty quick. Um, and I'm just, I'm literally just using a, like a, this is a luxe highlighter brush. It's a brush for powdered makeup, but I find that using like a brush like this just kind of, I don't know, it makes the cream product blend really nice. So when you're blending um, cream products into your skin, especially like a bronzer, make sure you blend upwards. Because if you blend down, it's just going to like the whole purpose of contouring is just been thrown down the drain. So when you place that contouring product there, you want to blend it up. See how I just like literally just created like a new cheekbone? Like. I really like this product. Um, one, because it's very natural. It's very subtle. I like that. I don't, as I said before, I don't like that really dark contour. A lot of people can pull it off. I personally, I'm just more into soft. 
I'm a soft but full coverage glam type of gal, you know? I'm just gonna put above my forehead and then just put like the tiniest bit there and then underneath. That's it. So this will create an illusion of a bigger lip because then it will just give a shadow. Then just really lightly contouring the nose, giving it a bit of, you know, shadow again. And then see how easy that just blends out. I probably wouldn't recommend doing this if you set your face and it's very matte because I don't personally believe in putting a cream product over a matte product. It doesn't work. It won't blend. So like even I probably should have even done this or sometimes I do. I sometimes do this step before I put the nude by nature powder all over. But as I said, because it's not really a, it's not like a matte, like a very mattifying powder it doesn't really matter if i put the cream over the top because as i said my face is still a bit it's like a bit sticky so i feel like this is really in depth and like you know i was like yeah i'm gonna talk about life <laughs> next minute okay so i just put a, a little bit more on this brush and i just really want to um focus on bringing that up Okay, last place I'm going to pop this is my jaw. Oh my god, I saw someone the other day. They must have used some sort of bronzer or something, but like forgot to blend it. And oh my gosh, I felt like saying something to her, but then I didn't want to be rude. It's like she just placed her bronzer there, but then forgot to blend it out. But like I've been there before, I've done that. <laughs> So since going to the Fenty Beauty event in Sydney and receiving the new Fenty bronzers, I've been obsessed with it. So I used the shade Island Ting, which I, I believe is the lighter color um, from the three bronzers, but I love this stuff. It's really beautiful. So I just grab, I like how it's not really pigmented because you can just build up the color. Like, as you see, like, I, like, just barely dipped my brush in. But it just creates, like, I love a warm, I'd rather an orangey-based bronzer than a grey. Um, I just find that grey can sometimes look really dull. It can make you look, not dead, but, like, you know, that skeleton sort of, I don't know. I see a lot of people with, like, a grey, like, a grey tone and I just don't find it flattering so this is why I love the um the Fenty because it's quite orange but not like Oompa Loompa orange like it does complement a sun-kissed complexion which is what I got going on um and I just pop a little bit around my forehead and then around here too that's what um that's what Hector taught me Bit of bronzer here to really lift up your eyes. Going a bit technical now. But yeah, like how nice is that bronzer? It's in the shade Island Ting. So blush, I love Orgasm by NARS. For those that don't know, it looks like this. It's like a coral watermelon, really, sh it's, it is quite shimmery, but like I like that. It just creates more of a glow. Okay, so when I'm wanting a more matte toned blush, I like the Sigma, this is like really underrated, Heavenly Powder Blush. I don't know if this is still made, but it's just like a really light coral, but it doesn't have any shimmer in it at all. So I don't know, I sometimes feel like a shimmery blush, sometimes I feel like a matte one. If I use the matte blush, I go a little bit more ham on highlighter. If I use the NARS one, I will, I won't put on as much, but that's like as much blush as I wear. I don't like very rosy cheeks, but that's just me, each to their own. So I'm gonna use my Hula bronzer. It's gonna really slightly contour. So just underneath the cheekbone area, but I found that that Fenty one is really good for doing this as well. But this one just gives like an extra bit of 
definition. What I always like to do just to blend everything all in together is just go in with my powder brush and just, you know, press it all in, make sure everything is all blended. So now I'm going to go in with highlighter and as I said, I'm going to set my face first to intensify the powder. So I'm just going to go in with the Urban Decay. Ooh, not the best smelling um, setting spray I've ever used, but it's definitely one of the best. So I would have to say at the moment, my favorite highlighter would be the Anastasia Beverly Hills Amrezy. I just find myself always reaching for this. I love the gold. I love... I love how it looks on my skin. It doesn't look too chunky. It's just like the right amount of what you want in a highlighter. Like, honestly, it's it's amazing. Um, I'm going to have to get another one. I think they, like, restocked it recently. Or am I tripping? Because I'm definitely going to have to grab a few more. All right. So, the places I like to put my highlighter. So, I've actually changed my little highlighting routine. Just because my base is already very dewy. And to be honest... I don't really like the, like I do like a wet look, but I also still want to look like I'm actually glowing from my face. So I kind of want to fake it to make it look like my skin's actually glowing when really it's the products that I'm using and the placement of the products. Oh my God. Look what just happened. That top bit of the highlighter just came off. I like to use a little precise brush. I also like to use... Oh, here it is. I couldn't find it before. The Anastasia one, but just any sort of brush with a tapered end. So, going to start off. As you can see where my little glow is, I'm just going to accentuate that. So, I'm just going to place a bit there. It does look a little bit more intense because I have a ring light. And every time something bright like this catches it, it just make, it like it, it emphasizes it way more. So um, it's just mainly the light. So I'm just pretty much going over the parts of my face that are already glowing and just emphasizing that. I kind of like to put it like here as well because in photos, like it looks really good. I don't know why. So just a bit there. Then I like to get it. Oh shit, not there. <laughs> um, on the tip of my nose. And then up like that. And then inside that little area again. I don't know why, but it kind of like does something here. And then see again here, like just above here, above here. I'm just kind of like literally looking at where my skin is already glowing and just emphasizing that. Then I will put some on my Cupid's bow on that pretty much like all over my lips to be honest Ooh. so I'm not going to go in with like a harsh colour on the waterline just because the top of my eyes are still pretty dramatic so I'm just going to use the same palette as we used before the NARS one I'm just going to go in with the two dark ones straight off the bat um, and just use that um, to create a shadow. You always want to use the same colors that you used on the top, on the bottom, just so it evens out. Um, but I love using a copper underneath because I find that in the light, it makes brown eyes look lighter. I don't know why. Like it looks really, like it really brings out brown eyes and sometimes I find when I use this sort of color my eyes kind of look hazel but most of the time my eyes are like really dark brown like black like what they are now but when I'm out in the sunlight sometimes they look really light dramatic underneath I'm gonna take a bit of that dark brown from this palette Actually, no, I'm going to take a bit of the black because I don't have a dark brown. Literally the littlest bit. And I'm just going to use that in my um, outer corners. I might actually keep that out to use for inner corner. So outer corners, like the littlest bit, just to give it a little bit, you know, just to match it up with the top. 
Okay, so I found the liner that I've been using in my waterline. It's Urban Decay Glide On. It's actually a lip pencil, but I've been using it in my waterline. It's just a nude. It's like a beigey, like pinky nude. And I literally just put that in my waterline. I don't like white. I find that sometimes it can look really unnatural and a little bit drag queen like on myself. I've seen some people pull it off, but I personally don't like a, like a really bright white. Um, but yeah, I like the nude. It's a lot more soft and natural. So I'm going to zoom out because my head looks huge. So this is just the Marc Jacobs Velvet Noir, I think. I'm just going to add that to my bottom. I don't need to add mascara to my top lashes because... I just got extensions like yesterday. What I usually would do is I would go in with my Astralis um, Amy White House. It's a cream eyeshadow. And I'm just gonna pop that in my inner corner. And I use this as a base and then I go over it with either MAC Vanilla Pigment, but I've been looking at the shades inside the um, Urban Decay palette. I'm just putting this right on the inner corner or as someone stated in my last video I'm just adding a little bit of bird shit in the middle of my eyes so you know it's cute bird shit like it looks good <laughs> so now I'm going to take the Game of Thrones palette and I'm going to take this shade it's like a yellow gold it's called King's Landing and I'm going to pop that just in the exact same areas as I just put um, the first layer of bird shit. So, ooh. I like this because it's gold and it goes with my... Stop. Okay, I'm going to put some underneath my brow bone. Like, I'm literally the most extra person you'll ever meet in your life. Like, literally. Bird shit goals. <laughs> I feel like I've been filming for ages, but like literally soz not soz because you guys asked for it. Okay, so a lip color I've been loving lately is a combination of, let me see if I can find it in here. The Urban Decay 24 Glide On Lip Pencil in the shade Uptight. This is my go-to lip liner. I literally use this like every time I put my makeup on. Um, and I put this all over my lips. So I literally line them and then fill them in. And then I'll put a lipstick on over the top or a liquid lipstick. But what I've recently been loving is the Fenty Beauty one. To be honest, I don't like this on its own. If I, like I've tried this without a lip liner and it was just a bit too light for me um, when I'm tanned. But maybe if I was a bit paler and I tried it, it would work. But on someone that's tanned like me, like 90% of the time, I don't like the washed out light nude look on myself. I know a lot of people can pull it off. Um, but I can't, I, I don't like it. So I'm going to go in with the uptight lip pencil now and just overdraw slightly and then fill my lips in. So probably should have sharpened this. Okay. All over. And sometimes I even just wear this on its own with some lip balm. Like honestly, it's a really nice color. I'll go in with the Fenty Beauty. This is a lip stunner, um, lip paint unbutton and all I do is because it is so light I just put like a little bit on my bottom and then I'll just do this by the way these are so long lasting I need to get the red one um because I tried the red one on at the event and I fell in love with the color so next time I go to Sephora getting the red on. So because I'm more of a glossy gal, I do prefer either lip balm or a gloss. Today I'm just going to put some lip balm on, just a clear one. Um, or if I'm feeling glossy, I'll put the gloss on, but I'm feeling lip balm today. And that's it. Sometimes I like to even spray my face again, like twice, <laughs> just so it really sets.
sets in, but I'm done. That is how I achieve my really glowy, dewy finish. I just thought I would have a little bit of fun with the eye makeup, but I actually really liked how it turned out. Like, to be honest, like, you can't even really tell that I've got leopard print on my eyes from far away. Like, I probably would even wear this out, to be honest. <gasps> actually, wait, I'm gonna try out the, um, Fenty Body Lava on camera because I feel like with this ring light, it'll just make it look amazing. So BLB. Okay, so this is the Fenty Beauty Body Lava in the shade Who Needs Clothes. <laughs> um, they do have this in a gold, which I need to get, um, in the shade Trophy White. It's what Hector used on me with our video. I'll leave it linked down below if you want to check it out. But this one's the other shade. And this is the brush that it comes with. So I'm going to put a few pumps on it and... Literally taking this to Fiji because like I'm going to be glowing at the beach. <gasps> it is so pretty. Stop it. You don't even need that much. Like a little goes a really long way. Oh my god, dying. I would honestly put this on my legs, like I'm not even joking. <gasps> I feel like I should call this video like how to glow. I would put that on my face, like legit. To be honest, I'm not gonna lie, it is sticky. Um, it doesn't dry matte, but I wouldn't say it's like an uncomfortable sticky. It's more of like a wet moisturizer type feel, but I wouldn't say it's like super sticky, but it doesn't dry matte. I kind of, I probably would prefer it if it just dried and you couldn't really feel it, but I don't think it would, um, yeah, like go on your clothes or whatever. Well, obviously it would, but it's not like an uncomfortable sticky. And I think I prefer the whole wet look. And I guess it doesn't, it can't dry if you want it to look wet. Um, I'm just rambling now, but yeah, that is the final look. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys um, learned something new because that is what I'm here for, teaching you guys makeup. Um, if you guys want me to do any other looks in particular or using certain products, leave them in the description box down below because I'll just go and buy them, review them, use them, let you guys know how I think. I don't know. I literally don't know what makeup looks to do. I felt like I've done them all, like all on my channel, but I guess I could just sit down, talk shit and just try new makeup because I actually enjoy doing that. Um, so let me know what kind of videos you want to see makeup wise because I really miss filming makeup videos because obviously I'm so passionate about makeup. I love doing makeup. So let me know what you guys want to see next on my channel and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye. You are